We're in Springfield, Ohio, and the owner of John's drive through is closing up shop for the night. A man approaches from the back. The owner spots him on the security camera feed. Yeah, this is John's drive through West Main Street. A uh, guy just tried to rob me and I shot him. He ran out the back door. Okay, is he injured? I, I think I hit him. With help from the store's security camera footage and a tip from a local hospital who treated a man for multiple gunshot wounds, police identified the perp as Ricky Hand, a known career criminal. I did try to rob John's drive He got shot three times. I did the crime, I ain't even gonna lie. I, mean, I just wanted to let you know. So John, what'd you do with the pistol that you had in there? Cause you know, it's my understanding when you run in there, you started pulling out and the guy saw you. Right, but I didn't even get it out. You were going for it though, right? But I didn't even get it out in the branch. He shot me regardless. Well, I think he's but aware that you've been robbing places at gunpoint or I've so. I've never robbed anybody. That's the first one I've ever done. <laughs> now, hang on a second. Now, you and I have been straight with each other every yeah. time we met each other, okay? Yeah. I know there's more to it than that. I did bring, I pulled it out. Okay. I pulled the weapon out. But I don't think I got it all the way out. Well, he saw you. That's why he shot you. Hand is indicted on 30 charges connected to a string of business break-ins at gunpoint. He confesses to a series of armed robberies. There have been probably a half a dozen or more robberies. Now you're looking at John's, you're looking at this break-in to this beauty salon. So I do. The beauty salon's a bonus because I didn't even know anything about that and you told me that. I'm going to prison for a long time. Well, you know that. Now, Hand sits in a Clark County courtroom in Ohio, where a judge has just handed down his sentence. Did you just give me 40 years, sir? Yes. You just gave me 40 years. Well, guess what? Sir, what's this? Yeah, that's <laughs> Hand was clearly expecting a lesser sentence. But if we look again, you just give me 40 years. you'll see he came prepared for the worst. You just gave me 40 years. Well, guess what? Look closely. Hand reaches into his arm sling and pulls out some cloth that was hiding a small bottle filled with, ready for this? His own feces and urine. <laughs> Ricky Hand lands in even more trouble for the feces flinging attack. In addition to his previous charges, he now faces charges of harassment with bodily fluids, obstructing justice, and retaliation. Next, we head to the S. James Foxman Justice Center in Daytona Beach, Florida. We are ready to go for out the Andrea Cook, Judge. All right, Ms. Cook, come on up. The woman being sworn in is 18-year-old Keandria Cook. Cook's in court today to receive a sentence for using a dating app to set up a robbery that ended with another teen being shot. The teen survived. Cook has accepted a plea deal that will drop a conspiracy charge, which carried a maximum penalty of life in prison. But counts of carjacking, attempted carjacking with a deadly weapon, and felony battery are still in play. All right, come on up, Ms. Cook. You get to say the final words. I just want to say that I'm sorry to have been wrong that her son had been shot because I didn't even know he was going to get shot. Um, my boyfriend and his friends get anything to do with this. I didn't even know what was going on until it was, I was at the wrong place at the wrong time. I just want to say that I 
the for the kids as much as I get a chance so I can get out and finish school and I can get my mama proud because I'm going to be her first child to bring home a high school diploma. <laughs> Cook now prepares to hear her sentence as her loved ones look on. Ms. Cook, you're before the court for sentencing. A couple of things uh, going in your favor. One, you didn't hold the firearm during these episodes. The, the second is that um, the victim uh, luckily survived. That being said, this was uh, intentional. It was an orchestrated ambush, and you are a main part of that. And for that, I'm going to go ahead and adjudicate you guilty of all three charges. Sends you to 20 years in state prison. <laughs> Concurrent as to the first two. The crying you hear is coming from Cook's mother. The sentence much more severe than they expected. Six charges. All fines and costs. It turns out that Cook and her mother's reactions were so intense because they believed the plea deal meant no prison time. Judge Foxman allows her to enter a new plea deal, citing miscommunication between Cook and the assistant public defender. As a result of that new deal... I think he got good in here, and I think he got potential on the side of that. Um, Cook's sentence is reduced to 11 years in prison. We now head to the Nesbitt Courthouse in Anchorage, Alaska, where this man... If you want to arrest me and drag me off, that's the only way I'm leaving. David Haig came to court looking for justice, but instead the judge ordered a new hearing to be held at a later date, and he's not having it. If this court didn't do right the first time, it sure can't now. That they had screwed me out of a plea deal, that the state had falsified evidence, and now they're lying about everything to cover it all up. And that's just the beginning of it. The game pilot and tour guide is seeking to clear his name in a decades-old conviction, accusing him of killing wolves illegally while working with the state predator control program. He claims the state doctored maps to make it seem as if he'd gone rogue, and that state officials, who were trying to save face when confronted with a public relations nightmare, falsified the boundaries of the map to frame him. The map! The map! This, they falsified this before trial, and there's a recording of the prosecutor and trooper talking about falsifying it before trial. Mr. They're going in and falsifying map that they convicted me with by altering the lines on it to make it corruptly seem I was shooting wolves in my guide area. That is a, that's felony tampering with evidence and because a trooper, an Alaska yes. state trooper was doing it with a prosecutor, the it's a over. conspiracy. Yes. And they used it at trial and knowing it was false. That is another felony. And I put my foot down because somebody has to so, well, you're gonna have to get the gas out of the no more hearings here. All right. No, 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 judge opts not to intervene He's a citizen of the United States. and leaves the courtroom. You do not need to take the man when you have six officers on him. Sorry, Mr. Hay. Sorry, so sorry that our court system is so corrupt that they would do this to you. Haig is charged with disorderly conduct for violating an order to leave a courtroom. A senator from Alaska has asked for an investigation into the tasing. It's a 
Haig's attempt to clear his name continues. We head now to a hearing in Louisville, Kentucky. The defendant, James Roeder, has been charged with burglary. His alleged partner in crime, his wife, Ashley. They're both charged with breaking into a warehouse and stealing six flat screen TVs. At the time of the robbery, Ashley was pregnant. James, who's been locked up in county jail since his arrest, has had a no contact order with his wife, meaning they're not allowed to speak to each other before their court cases because they're co-defendants. While they've been separated, Ashley gave birth to their son. You sure you're comfortable with this? Is this what you want to do? All right, just stay right there for just a second. The judge is addressing Ashley, <laughs> who's in court with her baby for her own hearing. James Roeder, who has just left the courtroom after his hearing, Roeder. is being brought back in. I don't want you to say anything to me about your case at all. Don't say anything. Your lawyer's not present right now. But I understand that there is a chance that you're going to go back to Todd County and that your baby is a month old and you haven't met that baby yet. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Miss Roeder, do you want to come up here? I know you have a no contact order between you and Miss Roeder that I have, um, that I issued, and I'm not changing that. Yes, ma'am. I'm making a temporary exception right in front of me on the record so that you can meet this baby. This is your son. Be careful. You see his little shirt? Yeah. <laughs> it could be a fair amount of time before Rotor sees his son again. Give everybody some. All right. Thank you. James Rotor is sentenced to four years for third degree complicity burglary. And Miss Rotor, you can stay up here because I'm going to call your case next. Ashley Roeder's given probation and is currently taking care of the couple's two children. Thank you for letting me be a part of that. If y'all aren't teared up, then you're just heartless. <laughs> I'm sorry for, you know, acting immature on the road. I understand that, you know, being on the road, you do have other people's lives in your hand. And, you know, I should have thought about that. Defendant Cyrus Matthews was there on misdemeanor charges stemming from a road rage case. As well as there's there like any way that we can reverse this jail time? Well, you're going to have to go to jail today. If you need to get out of your attending hearing, we can consider furloughs. Okay, right now you're going to go to jail right now. Okay? So you have to go to jail right now. No, 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 Matthew's girlfriend follows him out. There seems to be a moment of hesitation here on Matthew's part. We now know it's the bailiff trying to reason with him, explaining that his escape will lead to felony charges. To no avail. The Wadsworth police take over. He was sent to jail and took off. Matthews is way ahead, reaching speeds of up to 90 miles an hour. Officer James Walzer is receiving updates. Lyman from Maple. He was in an older gray four door vehicle. 28, he's not. He's running red lights at Hartman. Passing on the right at Williams Reserve. My speed's 90, trying to catch up. Wildworth, I think we're going to have a code two. We're going to have a code two at Akron 76. Matthews has crashed into a white SUV seen just off the road there. Where's he at? That's Matthew's car there. All right, we're going to have multiple vehicles, airbag deployment. Ma'am, are you okay? Okay. The passengers are a couple and their infant child. Okay. She's okay. All right, we got squads coming. 
Thankfully, they have non-life-threatening injuries. Ashley, help them get out. Help them get out. He's up here. Officer Walzer hustles over towards Matthew's car across the road. I'm going to need multiple squads. No, I, I, need, I need help, sir. Okay. You can hear that Matthews realizes he's made a truly horrible decision. What was going on? Why were you taking off? Matthews and his girlfriend are extracted by the Wadsworth Police Department and taken to the hospital. Matthews is charged with aggravated felonious assault for injuring his girlfriend and the occupants of the other vehicle. He's sentenced to 425 days in jail. His girlfriend is not charged. Thanks for being a fan of Court Cam. Subscribe to A&E to never miss a new video and catch full episodes on AETV.com.